Hello, I'm here at Priestfield Stadium in Gillingham with Steve from SGR Skill School. Steve, here's my question. How do you curve a ball? Okay, there's a certain mechanics to it. So, basically with the football, if you connect with the edge of the ball, uh, it will create a spin. So the airflow around it will allow it to swerve um, in a direction that you want it to go. So if I show you with the boot here, um, if, you, if you hit the edge of the ball, it will just generate that spin. And there is another way where if you connect again to the side, it will create a pressure on the ball, which again allows it to spin. But as I said, it's, it, it's quite technical and it's quite hard to do. Here's the real question. Do you think you could, maybe using boots like those or something made in the future, kick a football, give it so much spin that it boomerangs back to the kicker? Not a chance. Not a chance. All right, well, let's take a look at how one might be able to boomerang a football. To even think about boomeranging a football, we need to understand why the ball curves in the first place. A moving object is subjected to forces from the air through which it passes. This is one of Newton's basic laws of motion. A spinning ball deflects the air rushing past it, and this air builds up on one side, altering its trajectory. This sideways pressure is known as the Magnus force, and the faster the ball is spinning, the more deviation may occur. One of the most famous free kicks of the last 20 years is Roberto Carlos against France in 1997. Now in this instance, the ball took approximately 1.1 seconds to travel the 35 meters from boot to net. From this distance, the diminutive Brazilian created a deviation of approximately four meters. But our goal is to not hit the net. For our ball to create enough momentum to send it back from whence it came, Let's extrapolate. Imagine this 35 meter distance is the diameter of a circle. We know that this circle's circumference would be approximately 110 meters, but we don't need the ball to travel 360. We just want it back where it started, halfway, 55 meters, around 14 times more deviation than Carlos achieved. Okay, fine, so let's just hit the ball harder and faster, right? Wrong because the increased velocity would simply overpower the spin. In fact, we need our ball to slow down to aid its curve. The point at which the bend is most acute is the moment where forward momentum is lost and the Magnus force is able to dictate direction. But as soon as this happens, gravity takes hold, which means we require our ball to travel fast enough to cheat gravity without negating its spin. So, we increase the spin, and if the ball's rotations are in line with the faster speed, we maintain the equilibrium. Fine. But to do all this, we need some serious power. And where is this additional force coming from? Well, step forward, Isaac Newton. Mass times acceleration equals force. Our force in this instance is the kicker, and I refer you to my previous description of Roberto Carlos, diminutive. At five foot six and 150 pounds, the Brazilian superstar simply isn't big enough to generate the force that we need, because our boomerang ball would have to be shifting at about 420 meters per second, which is faster than a bullet from a nine millimeter pistol. So in conclusion, if you were 35 meters from goal, then it is theoretically possible that you could generate enough power and swerve to boomerang a football back to you. But you would need to run faster than a high-speed train and be about 75 feet tall. So there you go. If you love football, check out Copa 90 and subscribe. I'm Michael Stevens coming to you from Gillingham. And as always, thanks for watching. Ladies, want any knickknacks from the shop? <laughs> <laughs>